Welcome. This is a March 28th Beehive production user call. We have Andrew, Rod, Jan, John, and myself. And I couldn't help but notice that the Beehive 8 manual page might be missing a definition for dash W. I was checking a few things there and I started searching for it. I found it in the examples. And in addition to the 4G changing case next to it, which is not the end of the world because I think both are supported, Am I crazy? If I search for dash W, this flag has fallen out of the docs. Maybe I'm blind. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's it's a... not in the user <laughs> message it's if you invoke uh, behind one at a time. the card. Whoa, one uh, at a time. Uh, uh, Jan, what's your take on it? Uh, it's still documented in the usage message if you just invoke behind I don't the doubt that. arguments. I don't uh, doubt but that. But it's missing and I can't find it in the man page. That's okay. a regression. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And Rod, you had something? I just go to the synopsis at the very top of the man page. Is it in the synopsis? And search and let's see. Very top, right? It's... Yes. Top right corner. First. Line. Okay. So there's that. Okay, cool. But there's no documentation on what it means. Thank it, you, it, sir. it may be expressed in text without a hyphen before it. Uh, in examples, yes, but let's do a quick search on. Oh, I thought it'd be in this long left list of dash flags. Like, no, it's what I'm saying uh, is, it it may like hold on, be. let Rod go, please. It may not be listed as a dash W, it will simply be described textually. Okay, it's very common. Okay, and that you may also look for the what's the W stand for? Is that Oh, back up there we had MSRs. Because that's isn't that the ignore. I believe it's strict IO and beehive underbar config. MSR. I thought it was ign ignore MSRs. It is, uh, but uh, it looks like there's MSRs, a formatting yeah. uh fubar here. You could stop scrolling the page up and down. It's very sorry, hard sorry. to read. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, I don't see it there. But frequently, that's what you'll find is that the option will simply be in a textual check section of the man page and will so, not be broken out as a separate dash W. It in almost line, looked like it was dropped, but the text was left. Yeah, it looks like the uh, someone reformatted the man page and uh, didn't finish the work. Because Correct. it still, still says... Ignore accesses to unimplemented machine specific registers and the line you just highlighted by searching for MSR. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's no context around it. So there's this should probably be there with the dash W. There, exactly. There's 13. There, you, this is how it used to look. And so the sentence is still there. Um, but the Markup is gone. Okay, just can just verifying if I'm blinded or not. So okay, so it's it's still here. In my 30, I have a 13.2 production system which documents it correctly with the text that you just showed. Okay, so here's 13. Yes. You've got 13. Okay, 13.2. Cool. Got it's it. Regression in 14. Bummer. Thank you for catching that. Uh, check the get history of the man page. Yes, that that's oh, it got bigger again. Cool. Thank you. I'm not entirely crazy. That's good to know. Okay. Uh Rod, uh, so at the risk of being off topic, Rod's pre preface on the jail call saying, hey, this might not be for jails, but it got us thinking and he planted the seed for his uh testing he's got a lot of weights for things to happen which is not helpful in the big picture so he's wondering if there are ways in the vm to accelerate time on demand in a in a petri dish environment not to impact your production or screw up clocks but uh I, rod shall i go find the description from the jail call well, i can just it's pretty simple basically we want to be able to on vm exit if the 
the guest is basically going to sleep based on wall clock. In other words, it's got some pending event out 100 milliseconds or 10 seconds, doesn't matter. Um, shush, I got a cat going nuts. Um, just to basically tweak the TSCs and the HPET and, and other timers and, and time warp it forward and kill the delay um, is the idea to accelerate continuous integration testing rather than have to rewrite all the testing to time warp them. Uh, John, any thoughts or insights on that or things you've seen in the wild? I have not done that. I've seen that done many, 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 oh, well, maybe not many, many decades. I've seen it done decades ago on a mainframe, but not. What not was the use case yet. back then? Um, it had to do with channel controllers. I don't remember. Okay, no worries. It's been a while. Directly. Sorry, guys. It's been too long. <laughs> okay. Um, what would be actionable? Maybe a, a, P, a PR saying, hey, this would be a nice feature? No, I think I got to find I got to find somebody that is willing to bang their head against the wall and, and figure out the pieces to add to VM exit um, and to the TSC and HPET virtualization code. Mm -hmm. but not mistaken, I mean, Beehive has, I think the TSCs are just stored as an offset in the VMM block, and I don't know if you can directly tweak those or not. And the HPET, I think, is virtualized. So that's just a piece of software that you would need to tweak the value stored in it. I don't care about TOD clocks or any of that stuff isn't important to this test environment, though you would, if it were to become more generalized, you'd need to tweak the TOD and um, RTCs. We understand that there are lots of things that will break. I mean, that's just a given that, um, so I don't know. I don't know what the next steps are. I was going to go poke at VM exit and see if you can even tell the thing. The biggest, I guess the biggest caveat is knowing whether the guest, the, the VM exit is being caused because the guest is basically going to go to sleep for a long period of time. And how to detect that? That's the biggest hurdle. If you only need it as a testing tool, wouldn't it be good enough to uh, when the guests basically have a polar to uh, watch every, let's say, millisecond or so if the guest is sleeping, and if so, wake it up, so that you don't have to, but you have someone periodically checking in on the guest to uh, end its sleep. Just. It may be easier to implement, even if it is uh, wasteful. I don't know what waking the guest up would do. I mean, that's not going to do anything to it. Yeah, but instead of doing it from the VM exit, letting it go to sleep and then having a periodic timer to pull on it and... Again, what would... Prematurely waking the guest up, I don't think is going to do anything for it because it doesn't... It's yeah. not like calling delay. It's just an idea that it may be easier to let it go to sleep instead of having to do it in the effectively interrupt context. Well, do take a peek at that code and report on back. And who knows, maybe John and company have a use case. His use case is clear. It's a very good one. I for said this. John, not <laughs> you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we need to get other people interested so that it is fascinating and at least it's a very tangible notion so cool uh anything else relating to that beyond the seed being planted okay uh Jan, do you have a brief report on vpp i re i think i ran this by folks a few weeks ago but i it wasn't clear 
of its so, uh, um, role and use case. DPP is a diff is um, you could th can think of it as an accelerated uh, software data path uh, which lives in user space outside of the no normal kernel IP stack and is written from the ground up uh, around. They call it vectorized packet processing, but yeah, basically batched yeah. packet processing, yeah, where yeah. each processing step uh, is done on a whole batch of packets at a time. Ah. So, for example, bridging is, and then all the you sort the whole vector of packets, split them up into exit ports, and then you do IP routing per path and so on. And this allows you to get a lot fewer context switches and uh, code and data locality. And is what allows it to uh, exceed the throughput a normal BSD or Linux network stack uh, can reach for pure packet processing by 10x or more. Sometimes a factor of 100 is possible. And so far, this uh, VPV is up there, has been only available for Linux. Um, and there's uh, FreeBSD Foundation support for porting it over to uh, FreeBSD. Uh, for that, you have to have ways for it to get packets in and out of hardware to be useful, which means uh, either a NetMap or uh, for slower control plane operations, maybe a tap interface, uh, or the um, more or less usable uh, Intel data plane development toolkit uh, port. But so far, uh, the unfinished porting efforts uh, Allow them to run it with the DP um, DK in polling mode. NetMap for some reason doesn't work. It could be as simple as they found bit rot in a driver. Wouldn't have been the first time. Um, yeah, but if they get this working, it would be very interesting for Beehive to be a fast power virtualizing friendly uh, ne network switch. Will that get us a faster bridge? Yes. Great. If we plug it into Beehive directly so that you have basically uh, either a NetMap pipe or some other form of uh, multi queuing buffer right. uh, right. interface right. between that, you can bypass the normal kernel data path completely. Make it so. Uh, be, be so this is... <laughs> Go ahead, Rod. Yeah, be careful what you say about a faster bridge because this will not affect the host to Beehive bridge because that's still a single threaded piece of code. And the bridge that's being used here is a NetMap bridge, which is a different bridge. Got it. Okay. Um, Don't this think would you'll... be even further removed from the normal network stack. So um, they could yeah, say it to... isn't. One at a time. Go ahead, John. Uh, they compared it to the NetMap bridge uh, user space process, which is just more or less an example of how to use uh, NetMap. And this could really be the data plane for it. So it would be in the same position as the example NetMap uh, bridge driver of our daemon. But uh, the connection to the uh, to the host network stack could then either be a NetMap pass-through mode. So NetMap, if it fully supports NetMap, NetMap has a mode where uh, the NetMap process, for example, VPP, gets to steal or inject packets between the network driver ring buffers in the host IP stack. So that uh, basically anything the bridge claims just is invisible to the IP stack running on top of the driver and it could inject frames in as well. So this would then feel like uh, basically traffic coming in through the NIC to the uh, host. So the host wouldn't have a visible bridge interface. Instead, the frames from the uh, guests on the software bridge would just suddenly appear on the on a, a receive queue of its uh, NetMap enabled physical NIC. So, uh, it would look like uh, it would look strange uh, to the host, but oftentimes the performance bottleneck isn't really guest to host, but guest to outside, and there would help. 
of course, there are cases where you really care about the host to guest uh, network bandwidth, and there, this design is probably not optimal. But for the uh, guest to guest and guest to outside, this could work very well, I think. Uh, of course, we have to wait until they uh, progress to a point where you can write, have something stable enough that it's worth writing a, a Beehive network back and forth. So that you can bypass it. Until then, you could uh, maybe if they support netmap pipes instead of just uh, attaching to existing netmap interfaces, it would be quite simple to plug in the existing netmap uh, backend and attach it to the netmap pipe interface. Those are basically virtual netmap only interfaces with no physical NIC backing them. And so VPP could expose this, but I think a share just a backend where you set up shared memory buffers between them and then use whatever wake up mechanism you want, maybe uh, event FDs or something to act as software doorbell registers between Beehive and VPP. Yep, has to be seen what works. But it's an interesting development that because VPP was always discussed and came up in such discussions, for example, at UBSD code, but it was, yeah, but it's such a big porting effort. And now the porting effort is at least in progress. So oh. just for I mention it. Well, do keep us posted on that. Watch that space. This is a foundation funded effort, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. They... Yes. starting last November, right? Uh, if there's nothing else on that, I am exercising Corvin's GPU pass-through code on various generations of hardware. I'm not having great successes, but I am getting my tooling honed in the process. I did run out of memory last night and uh, that was interesting in that it poured <coughs> out and even the BIOS on boot gave me this warning that a device attempted to access memory that was it was not allowed to access. Uh, I thought that should not happen, but I'll keep investigating. And let, investigating that came out of the BIOS? And, yeah, yeah, HP BIOS proudly said that on boot and with a warning like, hey, letting you know about that. <clears throat> is, just for grins, is your BIOS fully up to date? Uh, it was a month or two ago. I'll gladly okay. verify. I doubt if they've done some you know, magic there. It's a 12th gen i7. Okay. And uh, I, go ahead. I suspect there is what has happened is we've set the MSRs and the map, uh, the IOMMU map in a weird way that the BIOS did not reset it. And which caused the GPU hardware to then access memory that was in fact out of range because it's no longer mapped the same way it was in the kernel. So this is a this is a failure to properly reset the device, which means you probably have functional level resets that's not doing all the correct stuff. So you probably are going to want to go to cold boots between after any reboot or crash good point I mean, a full power off i don't mean just yeah good to know um what do they call this oh uh, those e s r i should get the name um i should check the system event log uh you over ipmi or something like that it's a desktop, okay. somewhat by design, but that's okay. So what do they call Autobahn Management Console Server? Here we go. The If you're wondering, and this is pleasant news to me, uh, the this guy and this guy, which you'll routinely see on Windows Server, this may be of interest to you, Andrew, 
Those can be enabled as optional features on Windows 10 and presumably 11. So that was a nice surprise. And that's really helpful when you have a headless machine with no GPU. So uh, this is a text you see on screen and you can jump into a full either command.com or PowerShell and check your networking and do a bunch of stuff. So that was, I wish I knew that a long time ago. That, that comes up on the serial port, right? Yes, it does. And it can be enabled on Windows 10 and 11, not just server. Little did I know. I didn't know it could be used on 10 or 11. I knew it could be used on server. Exactly. Uh, I could not get it to enable through auto unattend.xml. The joint ones have that syntax, but it does, I believe, require networking to go retrieve a feature from Microsoft. <laughs> Hello, donkey. We've got cats. We've got dogs. So, um, uh, John, John D, you mentioned, hey, can we have hot pluggable GPUs? And fortunately, uh, uh, Oh gosh, I'll go with initials BN. He was wonderful. He was in Taipei, but he has a vision on how to pursue this. And I encouraged him to scratch that itch. So there is hope at least. And uh, at the developer summit, I brought up the fact that, hey, the IOMU on various platforms, notably AMD is a pain point. And Mark Johnson says Caustic is working on that presumably with foundation work. So they're being secretive as always, but hopefully we get a working AMD IO MMU out of that. And a brief, brief, brief topic of dis discussion and PF be used to block a VM from say calling home or uh, Outward blocking without impacting the host. Is there any sort of prior art on doing that? Just to say, hey, it's uh... yeah, it's quite simple to do. Uh, you have to make sure that you uh, see the right, uh, basically the member port traffic on the bridge driver with sysctls. If it, I don't know if it's the default setting or not, and then you can use any uh, PFIL hook like uh, IPFW or PF to filter the traffic on the member interface. So it's confusing when you try to filter it on the bridge, but you can, there's a setting you can configure where one of the CCTLs documented in the EF bridge man page so that you can f uh, apply the firewall to member interfaces instead of just the, the yeah, so that, oh. that works, yeah. Excellent, thank you. Um, oh, that said, I yeah, I've been pounding on my ThinkPad T490s in Taipei. I didn't get anywhere on the T490s. I could, in general, I can I get best get a splattered uh, screen, but I will keep at it. And Corvin's been responsive and great. Uh, so moving on. Uh, let's see, there is a nifty video about how the Intel Flex 170 GPU is all the promise of what uh, AMD and NVIDIA are telling us without all the handcuffs. Those devices are pretty tricky to find. It's not like they're plentiful on eBay. I've seen one out of like Germany, one out of Italy. But in the big picture, Hopefully, and I've said this for a very long time, hopefully that's the GPU of choice you want to have on your server for virtual desktops, but uh, VDI and friends, but I sure don't have one. And we lost Patrick, so we won't probably talk about uh, all things TrueNAS, which was a really hot topic while away. But in case you missed it, just broadly, I'll say broadly, it should be on your radar that uh, Vulture, a perhaps uh, being being a Vulture VPS host, has some rather new and intimidating uh, legal text on how everything you have over there is like now theirs. Um, that's somewhat assumed on all you know public services at this point in history, but they sure made it nice and clear that they're doing it. And uh, Andrew, I know you're not probably the most talkative today with your throat bugging you, but I, 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 I'm curious if your 
employer has a pitch that says we don't do that i recall you owning your own data centers and just not i can assure you we don't do that do and they this have a is way the of first phrasing that like private cloud or private something or we don't spy on you or <laughs> I, I, this is the first time I've heard this anyone doing this. So, I don't know. I'm going to run it by some of the, our sales guys, though. I think you'll find similar verbiage on Google's Gmail and, and all of Google's services that say that they own your data outright. They can use it any way they want. Yeah. Well, but we've known Google scans our stuff forever. I mean, that's that's their business. For advertising was one thing. For AI training is another. Fair. Oh. Ah, <sighs> uh, Jan. But Valtra, among others, is a links. VM hoster. So do they really think they can claim rights to all user data inside VMs hosted on their platform? It would just Apparently. be insane. At that point, they should be paying me to run anything there. You are the product. <laughs> I mean, that sounds, that sounds like that's what they want to do. Thank you for that, SysControl. Jan? <laughs> well, that said, any other hot topics? Several of these require investigation, unfortunately, <laughs> including like, oh, what, 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 what moving targets in our contract terms have our vendors provided this week? Yeah. Uh, fly on the wall. Any NFS library news for a Beehive VM to not bother the host with NFS connections when blowing things up in the lab? I uh, haven't just simply have not had a chance to work on it. Uh, one of my last little projects we've been working on is um, we actually we've managed to bring up 112 um, Beehive VMs for uh, which run Linux, which then run Kates. Um, and it's actually it's, it's running pretty well right now. We're, we're doing some testing on it. Do you have a nifty blog post to go with that? You're probably not even allowed to blog about it, but still. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Here is the blog post. Yay, enjoy. Okay, cool. Um, any new discoveries in that process? New techniques, new bugs, new anything? Um, no, I'm running it with, I am running with TAP right now, and I'm getting ready to try to create a static, um uh i o c uh uh p f v f uh and not track mac addresses to see what that does for performance on this okay. environment what i've found is that while p f has undoubtedly the human friendly syntax in i p f w is rightfully sometimes derided as a firewall construction kit instead of a ready to use firewall it is a lot more automation friendly than PF, unless you count for recursive anchors and stuff like this, because of how powerful IPFW tables are. So a lot more than is possible in PF can be done in IPFW yeah. by setting up the yeah, root static. I, I was the... referring to physical function, virtual function. Sorry about that. Oh. Okay. Okay, so no I think you were fighting PF the firewall. And, and <laughs> Michael Tap would probably be capitalized in this case, not being specific. There you no go. Worries. Maybe that okay. helps. Hmm. Okay. Anything else, gang? It looks like the open ZFS developer summit uh, and or users event will be in Portland in October, as opposed to downtown San Francisco. I've been running a poll among the developers and so far the 
feedback's been very positive because this may surprise you, but Portland can occasionally be cheaper than downtown San Francisco. Just so slightly. watch the space. And if you're local looking at you, Rod, we somehow may want some help or at least participation because, hey, they're coming to us. What, what was the dates? Uh, it's looking like either October. The, the second or third weekend of weekend of October, uh, that would be, and it probably puts you in some cool conference far away with IETF. No, it'd be November. And no, okay. be so yeah, um, at the weekend of the at the the nineteenth or twenty sixth of October. Okay. So there's that. And if any of you can roll on out west, that would be great. We can have a bit of a meetup. Anyway, uh, I will say speak now or forever hold your peace on this one. 37 all updated as needed. I need to bug out. Didn't cool. expect Likewise. I will catch you next time, guys. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody. I will call it. Bye. Like Bye. and subscribe.